Hello everyone, it's me, your Sharpie Puss Potato, and welcome back to Far Changing Tides, episode 4, or part 4. Uh, so, some bad news I'm afraid, before we begin. Basically, I need to apologise, as it seems that we had a slight bug or corruption in the game that prevented us from carrying on. So what happened is the furnace button, the little button above the furnace that you push to activate it so you can burn your fuel and move, that stopped responding. It just, every time I jumped and tried to push it, it went through. It wasn't damaged. I tried everything. I looked on Steam uh, to see if anyone else had the issue, and it does look like a few people had it. Um... The game basically becomes unplayable unless one of your previous saves works. However, none of our previous saves worked either. I, I tried loading all of them and the button just was unresponsive. So, no part four, I'm afraid. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later. Peace. I wouldn't leave you hanging like that. But you're probably wondering, how did I fix this? Well, like I just said, I didn't. What? I just started the whole game again because that was the only option. However, I figured that it wouldn't take me too long because, you know, having played through it once, I knew most of the puzzles, I could remember them okay. Um, so yeah, I, it took me around two and a half hours maybe, maybe a bit less to get back to where I was. But honestly, it didn't feel too much of a chore, to be honest, because, you know, I was just relaxing, watching. I had, like, YouTube up. I was watching a series someone recommended called Tokyo Ghoul. That was pretty cool. However, not related at all. So just ignore I even mentioned that. So having said that, please stay tuned for part four of our little adventure, which is now going to be, you know, me carrying on. However, I need to warn you that because I wasn't recording live, um, it basically means you're going to be stuck with commentary Sharpie Puss for this uh, part four. Uh, this will be the final part in our series, so please enjoy that. We come to the epic conclusion to see what happens. So yeah, I hope you enjoy that as well. Um, and yeah. Oh, one more thing. I have a little Brucey bonus for you. Nice to see you. To see you. So during my run that I did to get back to part four, when I started the game again, I also ended up completing some kind of speed run trophy, which I didn't expect. So yeah, this trophy basically requires you to complete the journey in, I think it was like 210 minutes. So it basically means that I managed to speed all the way through the game in 210 minutes which is quite a long time but still not that long i guess um and i even made a few mistakes so it wasn't the smoothest run i i did a bit of backtracking here and there you know made a few errors but seemed to still make it so anyway because of this i've decided to upload a separate video yes! Yes! which i'll release alongside this one and this video will be the full playthrough of where I obtained that trophy. However, maybe this is good news for some of you. It won't contain any commentary at all. It will just be a pure gameplay speedrun sort of thing. Wow. Um, so for those of you who don't like all my blabbing, there you go. That one's for you maybe. If you just want to enjoy the game with a bit of, you know, like just witness the game without any, any commentary sort of thing, that can be for you. So anyway, without further ado, please enjoy the final playthrough of Far Changing Tides. This is part four, and if you like, you can check out the other speedrun video. Anyway, please enjoy. Hello and welcome everyone, it is me, it's Sharpie Puss Potato. This is Commentary Sharpie Puss you're watching, and this is where we're carrying on from part four. So as I said in the intro, this is not the same save that we were playing. This is uh, part of the 
new run that I had to do basically so we're going to be watching this together and uh, I'll leave my comments as we go I'll try not to talk too much but you know me I do enjoy a little bit of blabbing here and there so uh, as you can see we're quite low on fuel in this playthrough I honestly I didn't spend a lot of time picking up a lot of extra fuel I was just trying to quickly get back to where I was sort of thing um, so I think that might have been the last bit of fuel I put in there actually But yeah, I hope you're having a uh, a nice morning, a uh, nice afternoon, a nice evening or a nice night as you're watching this game. And uh, I hope you are enjoying this little far adventure as much as I have been because yeah, I've been having a nice time with this one. It's just a really relaxing sort of game, you know, just satisfying and relaxing, immersive it's just overall a good game and this was a total waste of a speed boost by the way i think because i think we're gonna just uh, actually no it seems okay i didn't hit anything i just assumed that i would have but as soon as i pushed that button i was like oh god i'm gonna definitely hit the the barrier where we stopped but uh yeah but as you can see not a lot of fuel and I believe there's going to be another section where we need to go down under in a second. Because where we left it, there was like a, um, what would you call it? Like a, a blockage. Of, well, there was a waterfall in front of us, so I guess the only way is down. But, yeah. I think with uh, with this game, it's uh, is one that I'll leave a little review for. Um, I, I think I can leave a review on like the PlayStation Store, but um, also I'll leave a review in the YouTube video itself. Maybe when we get to the credit scene, um, I'll leave my review there, and like I'll just maybe I'll write down a few notes of what I want to say, and. Um, yeah, I'll just give a little voiced review at the end of the game, like my thoughts and my what I liked, what I didn't like, stuff like that maybe, just to, you know, just to tickle your fancy a bit. No, I think it's just a nice game and I'd like to give it a sort of a proper review. Um, and maybe I'll start doing that with all the games that I play just at the end of it, just have like a, a short section at the end where I'll just leave my thoughts sort of thing. Um... Because I was thinking, like, uh, after I finished Death Stranding, I should have maybe given a review on that, to be honest. But, um, yeah, let's, let's just see how it goes. So stay tuned for the end of the video if, uh, if you want to check that out. So as you can see, conserving my fuel here because uh, I wasn't sure if I needed that fuel to actually... Uh, get down, you know, because when you're in the submarine mode, you need to be burning fuel to move. So I thought, okay, I'll save that little bit of fuel that I've got there. It's not much, but hopefully it's enough. However, here, I remember that when there's a boy in the water, this was when I was playing through the second time, I noticed that there's usually a chain connected to the boy. And that, you, that chain is usually connected to something you can hook. See? Like there's something here. So whenever you see a boy in the game, it usually means that if you swim down and you've got the crane, or even if you haven't, there's sometimes something that you can interact with down there to, you know, to get some extra fuel. So luckily here, this is where, you know, got the fuel towing up. And here, I think, what was I doing? I don't even know what I was doing here. Oh yeah, I was going down, because I thought, okay, we're gonna have to go down. And there's our fuel, should pop open. Only two bits though, so I need to, need to beware, Ooh, as you can see. Don't know why I put it on top of the lamp, or the chandelier, whatever you wanna call it. I was having a bit of trouble getting through that door there. 
so this is the thing that I was saying like I don't know how and here like I could even get down I was making so many little mistakes like this to slow slow, slow myself down yeah I still managed to get that trophy for you know beating the game in that amount of time so yeah quite quite uh impressed with myself I, I guess or not impressed more shocked I should say So loading that in. As you can see, I'm totally stuck here like a plonk. My rudder was stuck on the rock, so down we go. There is an achievement for actually doing this section without crashing into rocks, but yeah, don't worry. I'm not going to achieve that. Not this, not this run. I like to think that my my navigating in the sub isn't too bad. It could be a lot worse. It could be a lot better as well, but, you know. I'm not here to judge. That's your job. You're here to judge me. Judge away. Oh, see? Hit the rudder there. Hit the tail. I might hit, yeah, hit the roof as well, so yeah, definitely not doing a good job, and I noticed there was a little bit of fuel down there, so I hit the bottom just to quickly go and grab that fuel, because uh, yeah, I figured I'm probably going to need it. So, whack that fuel in and carry it on. Up we go. I believe we just go up, up and away now. Oh no, not yet. So it's quite quite tight to get through there. Like if you don't want to hit the ceiling and you don't want oh, here I totally put it way too high. <laughs> I hit the ceiling and got stuck. But yeah. So yeah, I take that back. My navigating skill here was actually terrible. Now we go up, if I don't get my tail stuck again. And this thing here, I, I wondered what that was. I won't spoil it for you, but uh, yeah, I noticed here that it looks like I need to hook that thing. So that's what I did. I just grabbed or tried to grab the hook. There we go, grab the hook. However, I thought is this actually going to hook correctly because I'm, I'm right on top of it so I don't know if the thing would work so I decided to maybe go up a little bit just in case because I don't know if that would work give it a go and as I thought did do anything because I'm on the side so Yeah, see, I was just totally flabbergasted here. Didn't know what I was doing. Because the you can see the chain is like hooked on my sort of secondary rudder sort of thing, so it wasn't great. So we tried again. Then I noticed the ship was moving backwards. So gosh, so many little mistakes in this section. So again, grabbing the chain. And now it should hook there, hopefully, without any issues. Take two. Is it going to work? Still nothing. 
and then I couldn't get down. That I was really making a mess of this, but I think there we go. There it released, so we're all good. But I think I didn't notice. Oh, I did notice. Okay. This bit was just terrible, to be honest. I did not do a good job there. So I figured I'll probably have to like drive into that thing because it looks like, you know, it's it's shaped the same way. So I just sort of parked it in there and hope that was the right thing to do. There we go. Nice and snug. So this bit is cool. I won't I won't talk over this bit. sailing on our own to submerging on our own now we're flying on our own pretty cool pretty cool indeed So I think a lot of luck went into this little dude's journey, to be fair. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting. I saw the turbo thing available, so I just clicked it, but it literally did nothing. So that was a, a bit of a waste. So all that means is that, you know, you have to wait a little bit longer and enjoy the scenery with me uh, because, yeah, that's a wasted turbo right there. I decided to put the sail up just to see if that did anything you know maybe the sail would get us some wind and we could sail a little bit faster in the air maybe there we go so as i put the sail up i noticed we are falling down quite fast I don't know if this was me or if this just always happens, but as you can see, we are going to slide out here. Plop back into the sea. So that was a nice little, nice little balloon ride. And we just reached a checkpoint there. And... I don't think we've got any fuel at all. I popped down just to see if there was any and I'm sort of looking around the ship, but no. No fuel available, I'm afraid. So I'm just looking in the background that sort of what we've just sailed past there it kind of looks like a dead like deer or something but a massive one and that's that rock back there kind of looks like a whale a bit as well just noticing these things like when you're watching rather than playing you do notice a little bit more of the scenery and stuff because you know when I'm playing I'm mostly focused on that little flag to make sure it's going to stay in that blue bit and if it starts dropping then I need to move it around a bit
Also, one thing that I didn't really notice before, and probably you might not have as well, is because I do talk a lot, is the music in this game. It is actually, like, top tier. I, during this playthrough, this long playthrough that I did, even though I was, like, watching, you know, YouTube and series in the background, I had the music quite loud for the in-game. And a lot of the time I would pause what I'm watching just to listen and for like a really long time, for at least I'd say like an hour and a half, I was just listening to the in-game music and stuff because it's really good actually. Really like adds to the atmosphere. I hope they do another, uh, like a sequel to this, to be honest. That would be cool. I don't know what though, because, you know, it would be nice to have a different kind of vehicle. Like going into space or something, but I think there's too many space, uh, like simulator kind of games. Um, or adventure games. Trying to think what could be cool. Maybe like a mech, like a robot or something. Maybe, maybe like uh, something just completely different, like a roll cage, you know, like those sort of wheels that can just, um, I think they're called roll cages. They're like you sit in them and the whole wheel, you're like sat in a wheel sort of thing. That would be kind of interesting. Or maybe just have it so there's like lots of different vehicles that you sort of swap between. That would be cool. Just thinking out loud, but you know. Oh, and do you see those little plants in the background? Like those blue and red, yellow plants uh, on the rocks. So if you, yeah, the, these plants here. This is what your plant turns into when you plant it on the ship eventually. So, um... Yeah, it's a shame that I didn't plant it on this run, so you could have actually seen it, what it grows into. But essentially, what you see there is what it grows into. So that's a nice little touch, you know, that your plant is actually featured in the in the background as well. So you can sort of be like, hey, my plant it has got some brothers and sisters over there. So here it looks like there's some debris in the water. which usually means either A, there's been like a tidal wave that has hit a town, or B, someone was here. Which one is it, I wonder? There's a lot of plants, and plants usually indicate life. You know, and we haven't seen a lot of life. We've seen a few animals along the journey. Um, and birds, and, you know, uh, okay, I take that back. We have seen a lot of life, but we haven't seen any mm, plant life, let's say, or, you know, most of it's all been like very rocky and, you know, desolate sort of thing. So, yeah, so at least, you know, there's life still flourishing out here sort of thing, which is nice to see. There we go, just crashed it. And then up into this little, little thing. I like to think that this is like a, a lighthouse or something. So I didn't miss that button on purpose. I actually already knew that there was another box there. And the reason I know that is because I played through this bit just uh, to get the achievement sort of thing. So... Yeah, I knew to click that. And then here we go. This bit is pretty cool. I like this. And there's our balloon on the wall there. If you see in the in the lighthouse actually painted there. So 
Makes you think, did someone else use this balloon? You know. I mean, there's even a balloon on the left there, isn't there? maybe the wreckage see just listen like that that music one sec so the way they did that it's just so simple but the music just makes it, takes it to like another level sort of thing, you know? That's what I like about this. It's just overall, it's just a really well done game. And I still stand by what I said, that the, the fact that there's no text or speech in this game is, it honestly adds to it. And this confused me because my ship is now totally back to front. So, you know, everything's reversed. So this, this felt a bit weird, to be honest. was weird as well because you know you never see the sail come up to your screen it's usually going the other way so and you couldn't see the flag you just had to kind of check that other sail at the back to make sure that it's active but I really like the design I mean just look at the ship itself like the fact that it's like, like it's all steampunky at the front you know and then it sort of transitions into like, you know, almost like a one of those houses that you see in like, I don't know, Spain or Mallorca or something or Greece, you know, just kind of like not not cheap, just unique. You know, it's got that sort of same vibe to it, like a fisherman's hut kind of thing. And then you've got that little industrial uh, like crane on the back and another little house. So it's like you could... You could have a few people living on this by the looks of things, but yeah, that would be cool as well. If you actually had like a little crew on this, maybe in the future game, you know, that you have someone who you can assign to work the engine or something like that. Someone to keep the sail active. I don't know. That would that'd be kind of cool. Or being able to just switch between them, you know, like switch from one character to another and adjust it quickly. But it's kind of nice actually being able to roam the ship as well and just do it all on your own. Feels quite satisfying when you get everything moving correctly. You know. Okay. I believe we're coming up to the end here, so I will shush and just let, let it happen.
So there it is, guys. That is the conclusion. We have ended our little journey. We found our little friend. And I hope you enjoyed. For me, that is the perfect ending as well. Just saying that before it fades out there. It didn't need anything extra. That game was honestly perfectly executed from start to finish. Um, so, what do I even say here? I mean, to be honest, like music... Oh, actually, let's do this. Let's make it structured. So um, let me just load up my notes here. Here we go. So I'll go through like each category uh, and I'll ramble for a bit as well. So um, first of all, let's talk about the ending there. So, you know, we just found our friend. Maybe it's a brother or a sister. Maybe it's a boyfriend or girlfriend. Not sure. But uh, that's the thing that I like about this game. That it, it leaves it up to you you decide what it is maybe there is law that you can read into but for me i think it's perfect that it just doesn't have any in-game law or anything it's just totally left up to your imagination it's like reading a book or something you know that you imagine the way that the game what or sorry the book wants you to imagine it as it's it's totally up to you that's what i like about it so for the review purpose, I'm going to be calling uh, that little dude in the background is going to be called Little Dude or Little Guy or just Blue. Because even though it's kind of his coat is teal color, you know, I'm uh, just going to call him Blue. Um, overall, really satisfied with the game ending. You know, it was a simple ending, but powerful as well, you know. Like, when I played through originally, like... I didn't get like emotional, but I felt, I felt happy and satisfied with that ending. You know, it was like, you know, just, it's like art or something. I don't know. It was like watching a painting unfold, like from start to finish. I don't know. Hard to explain, but that's the best way. Ah, I've got a perfect way of explaining it. It's like watching an episode of Bob Ross, you know, you've got happy little cliffs and happy little accidents happening but at, in the end you you always think when he tries to fix those happy little accidents that he's ruined the whole painting but in the end it all comes together and it's all perfect so that is the way that i'm gonna explain this it is a the equivalent of a bob ross painting we don't we don't make mistakes we have happy accidents um yeah, the thing I really liked about the ending is, you know, they both just stood there looking at one another. No words spoken. The way I imagined what they'd be looking at if you could see them is just kind of smiling at one another with whilst like tearing up, you know, like tears in their eyes. But they're both just stunned in shock. They know that they found one another, but they're... And that's enough for them. They don't they don't feel the need to run and hug and show all that emotion. They're just stood there staring, smiling, and happy. And for me, that is that's the way I've imagined that ending. And that's you know, you will have your own imagination on how it ended. But for me, that's how I like to imagine it. So simply brilliant ending, honestly. Very good. Um, you know. Uh, I was thinking maybe the developers could have added some additional animations to convey the actions, like maybe have like, you know, one of the characters like raise their sleeve up and wipe away tears or, you know, something like that. But I think it's it works perfectly without any animation as well. It's more powerful, I think. OK, going back a little bit now to um, I think it was at two hours, nine minutes um there was like a, a dead lady remember the frozen lady I'll, I'll maybe put a picture down here so you can see um so yeah this was about halfway through the game we encountered this dead lady and i wanted to touch on this a bit because i i know i commented on it at the time but i want to give my overall view so i don't know if you've noticed but she actually had the little photo of red uh red is that's going to be the name of that other friend that we found. So if ever you hear me refer to Red, that's that. So 
that would mean the red was very likely her son or daughter um so at first i thought that maybe when i saw that photo at first i thought maybe that it was you know the mother of both of them of red and blue however i don't think so because during that scene there was no real mourning uh sort of scene or music to indicate that he was in that the main character was in shock or we should feel something you know it was just kind of like a sad scene like the the photo dropped on the floor but immediately we started spamming uh like fuel into the furnace to melt the ice and escape so it didn't feel like it wanted us to feel some emotion towards that lady which makes me think very likely it's more of a friend uh like that red is blue's friend and that was red's mother there um but anyway i just wanted to touch on that because um you know she was obviously on her way to go and find red probably but then the ice got the better of her and her ship which was a really cool looking ship by the way i was hoping we might get a chance to ride in her ship for a little bit and get back to ours but instead the game made us uh brace the ice as well and you know jumping over the the little ice thing so that was satisfying too okay so overall here are my main thoughts on far changing tides let's start off with the music first things first the soundtrack and the music as i have said this game leaves a lot to your imagination however the music it adds so much to this game that funnily enough like i said during the second playthrough was only the the time where i actually uh sort of noticed the music so much so if you haven't already i recommend just going onto youtube and checking out the music the soundtrack or just watch the other video that i did of the full playthrough and listen to the music without my commentary and it, it changes the game completely when you listen to it so yeah Okay, on to the art now. So I think it goes without saying that the art style in this game is like top tier. Felt like walking through a painting, like I said. And it just, the more you see, the more you want to keep pushing forward to encounter more of this like beautiful scenery and the, the weird kind of Nordic steampunk world sort of thing, because it's very unique, you know? Um, but again, like I said, feels like walking through a Bob Ross painting at times, you know, just really, really cool. On to the gameplay and the puzzles. So, like I said as well, simple puzzles. It does hold your hand a lot and gives you these bright blue buttons and hooks and stuff to notice. But it's still super engaging and it's not like you just sit there and the ship sails and submerges on its own. You still feel like you are the captain. And I like that a lot, to be honest. Let's talk about the length of the game next. So uh, my first playthrough, uh, before it bugged out, I think we must have been going on three or four hours, probably. Four hours of gameplay. Satisfying gameplay as well. For this level of game, I think was perfect, honestly. Like, couldn't, couldn't ask for anything more. So, yeah. It just hit the sweet spot. And I think it for the price that you pay for this game and everything, it was the perfect length. Let's just do the overall verdict. So my overall verdict for this game, I will admit during the first minutes of the game, I did have my doubts that it would be too simplistic and boring. However, I'm very glad to say I was completely wrong. And as soon as I got my ship, my whole mindset changed and I was taken back uh, by the art the music, the atmosphere, and it's safe to say that this game, in my opinion, it is a little masterpiece, I would say. It's just nothing more to say on it. I think my feedback has done it justice. Um, so I'd just like to personally thank uh, Okamotive and Frontier Foundry 
this was the, I believe, developer is Okomotive, and I believe the publisher was Frontier Foundry. So, yeah, if, uh, I don't know, maybe these guys might watch videos on their games. If they do, uh, I can't wait for the next one, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So, one more thing to add. As I was writing up my thoughts on this game, I decided to actually look if there is a sequel, maybe in development, maybe there's one active. Well, let me tell you something. For those of you who don't know, like myself, when I was recording this, there isn't one. Not yet. Not yet, anyway. But, and this is a big but, there's a prequel. Nani? Nani? A previous version of Far that came out in 2018, four years before Changing Tides. This one is called Far Lone Sails. And something I noticed straight away when I clicked on this game look at that vehicle. Look at the vehicle there. It looks kind of familiar, no? Look closer. Now look at this. Look at that. It's Red's vehicle. Honestly, my mind is totally blown when I saw this. So that means that in the first game, I imagine you're playing as Red. And I've totally skipped that and submerged myself, submarine pun for you there, in the second game. So I've totally skipped over the first one. So I think you all know what that means. We're going to have to go back. I'm going to have to purchase Bar Loan Sales. Is it Loan Sales it was called? Yeah, Loan Sales. Because um, it's not on PlayStation Plus from what I can see. But I should be able to get it pretty cheap, hopefully. Because if it's four years old, it might be on sale and stuff. So... That's a job for future me. So if you enjoyed this, I hope maybe you'll tune in for the next episode. Um, which will be Lone Sales. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to watch me play through that one sometime. And uh, I'll look into that. Christmas is coming up. Maybe I can buy it for myself as a little cheeky Christmas present, you know. Um, so for now... I think that's all I wanted to say. So I need to thank you all very much for joining me on this little adventure. I enjoyed it very much and I hope you did too. Even though I did miss a few big blue buttons from time to time. And I did backtrack quite a bit like a donkey. But that's just me. So if you enjoyed, even with my flaws, that's just me being a Plonkosaurus Rex. But I thank you very much for sticking with me through the adventure. Appreciate all the comments you you have all been leaving me. All the likes, all the views, everything. It, it really, it means a lot. I'm a, I'm a small little potato on YouTube. And, you know, at the end of the day, I do these videos for my parents. But then I made them live so everyone could see them uh, just in case. So now I do them for anyone who's interested. And uh, when I see people who I don't know or my friends just liking these videos, it, it does mean a lot. So thank you for that. Um, so without further ado, everyone, you know the drill. I hope you have a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening or a good night. And I shall see you next time. I've been Sharpie Puss Potato. You've been you. Thank you very much. And... Peace.